All right. So <clears throat> instead of going through in detail all of the various convenience functions that uh, are in <clears throat> the corn shell on OpenBSD, I figured I would run through them sort of quickly just so that you can start using them and uh, see what they're all about. So the first one is that you can uh, make aliases for various commands um, <clears throat> just by uh, doing the command that you want to have be a shorthand for something and then the command that you want it to be right <clears throat> so now if I type LL um, I'll get LS dash L as my uh, <clears throat> output um, <clears throat> this only works at the beginning uh, of a command so you cannot for example um, do something like uh, <clears throat> I don't know have an alias for uh, like your home directory um, to be like slash home slash me and then do ls home uh, it'll just be like what the heck is home uh, it, it doesn't know and if you try to just run home it'll be like can't execute this this is a directory uh, so to remove an alias uh, you can just do unalias home and to see all of your aliases you can just type alias <clears throat> and so you can see uh, I have like tmux to be an alias for tmux-2 because that gives you 256 colors or whatever which makes my prompt look nice and pretty. Um, you know I've got ls alias to be ls-af. Uh, I now have ll to be ls-l and some of these are included uh, by default for the shell. Um, some of them are ones that I've added myself. Um, <clears throat> So what next? Uh, well, you can do command substitution, right? So <clears throat> just as a, I don't know, quick example, um, I've got a, a plain directory right here. And I can do ls. And the way you do command substitution is, um, well, what command substitution is, is you run a command and the contents of that command get put on the command line as arguments to whatever command you have in front of it, essentially. So I can do echo plain, and that is essentially a shorthand for ls plain, right? You get the same output. <clears throat> um, that's not uh, a very practical example, um, but <clears throat> there are some cases, right, when I'm doing uh, e-tags. Uh, e-tags is a command that uh, takes on its command line a list of files that you want it to find the definitions for. Um, <clears throat> so like if you're reading code and you have, uh, you wanna be able to see where some variable is defined, quickly, uh, you can run e-tags on all of the source code in that, uh, you know, pro for that program, and it will give you the location very quickly. Um, so what I frequently do when I'm running e-tags, especially on a big project, is I'll do e-tags find dash name, and then uh, star dot ch right and so essentially this second command will find every file uh, that ends in uh, c or h and put it on the command line and then e tags will search through all of those files and <clears throat> find all of the definitions for various source code variables and functions and whatnot. So that's a, you know, a more realistic example that we don't just don't have enough uh, experience with uh, just computing in general to really run, but it is very useful. Um, so what else? Um, I've mostly covered this. Uh, parameters, right? So parameters I've briefly covered, right? Um, and you can view all of your parameters by typing the set command. Um, <clears throat> but I've got 
too many to really list. So I'm going to uh, fgrep-v complete them. Um, and essentially what that did was it, uh, I have several arrays. So parameters can be regular uh, <clears throat> variables, but they can also be arrays, um, which is kind of uh, beyond what I want to talk about for this video. But <clears throat> for the most part, most of the time what you're going to see is a just variable and then either a number or a string, uh, stuff like that. And <clears throat> you can uh, set them uh, just by doing like my var, and it doesn't matter actually. So uh, it is case sensitive. So my var is different than all uppercase my var, which is different than my var with just one capital. Um, so case matters. Um, but if I say my var equals uh, slash home slash me, then I can do ls my var and you put a dollar sign in front of a parameter to get the value of it <clears throat> and that'll list my home directory. Uh, so if I do just ls uh, tilde also uh, expands to your home directory, uh, that will give me the same thing. And I can do ls slash home slash me and I get the same thing again. So <clears throat> that's uh, sort of parameter substitution in a, nuts in a nutshell. Um, like I mentioned previously, uh, you can export myvar so that it's uh, put in the environment for every command, or you can just have it be uh, available to you when you're running your shell for parameter substitution. Um, there are lots of different things that you can do uh, to modify the <clears throat> output of a parameter substitution or you know change it um, and you can read those in under the parameters section of uh, the manual page but uh, the two most important ones in my view are this uh, hash and double hash and uh, percent and double percent followed by a pattern so uh, <clears throat> if you want to uh, let's say strip uh, an extension off of a parameter name. So let's say we've got, <clears throat> um, so I've got this my git opt.c, and I'll set my var equal to my git opt.c. And if I want to get uh, my var uh, without um, <clears throat> that dot c on it, I can do something like this, and then my var, and then dot star. And <clears throat> I haven't really gotten into patterns yet, but essentially this will, uh, if it finds a dot in my var, followed by anything afterward, and it finds that at the end of my var, it will remove that from the output. So if I just do an echo here, you'll just get my git opt. You won't get the dot c part. <clears throat> and uh, as an aside, I said that you can do my var like this uh, to get the output, um, but you can also uh, always do something like this. You can surround it in braces too, um, <clears throat> which is useful if you want to do something like echo uh, my var and then you know, add something that would be uh, considered part of a parameter name afterward, right? So <clears throat> uh, you can see this just does my git opt.c awesome. Uh, if I try to do that uh, without the braces, uh, it'll think that I'm trying to echo my var awesome instead of just my var. And it won't find it, so it'll just print out nothing essentially. Uh, I could do my var, I could give my var awesome a value um, like this, and then that will echo sweet instead of my get up dot c awesome, right? So <clears throat> sometimes those braces are important and uh, it's useful to know about that. Um, <clears throat> what else? 
Um, oh yeah, there are certain special parameters um, that you can use. Uh, the question mark uh, gives the exit status of the last non-asynchronous command. Um, <clears throat> I have my shell prompt actually set up to list that. Um, and if you uh, want to know all of the various uh, parameters that get set or automatically by the shell or are used in some way by the shell or are exported by the shell, uh, that will be listed in the manual page. And if you want to make your prompt pretty, uh, modify PS1. Um, so I'm not going to get into that because that's a little bit more complicated. But uh, yeah, let's move on. So I've mentioned that uh, tilde will expand to your home directory. Um, there is also another kind of expansion that is occasionally useful. Um, <clears throat> where you can do something like ls tilde and then suppose that there are several directories that I want to list in my home directory like uh, ksh and noob to dev I can do this and what this will do is essentially this tilde will get expanded to my home directory but then uh, that will get prepended to two separate arguments um, <clears throat> so this is essentially the same thing as doing and this, right? So you can see that output hopefully looks pretty similar. Um, this brace expansion will uh, put this in front of this and then create a new argument and put this in front of this. And you can nest these two. So if I have uh, under noob to dev, I've got a couple different things like I've got a KSH directory under here. Uh, I could do something like um, this and now I'll get home slash me slash ksh home slash me slash noob to dev slash ksh and home slash me slash noob to dev slash os install if I want to get uh, noob to dev by itself I need to put just an empty parameter and now I'll get noob to dev noob to dev slash ksh noob to dev slash os install uh, as well as just home ksh uh, what else patterns okay so patterns is maybe one of the most useful things that you can use with the shell and <clears throat> it's also called file name expansion um, and essentially what the shell will do is if it sees a star uh, a uh, left brace uh, or a question mark um, or an at sign or a uh, not sign or well it says yeah or a plus sign yeah so these three character or these five characters um, sorry one two three four five six characters um, <clears throat> and I missed plus. Um, those six characters, if it sees them unquoted, then it's going to say, all right, we've got a, pr uh, a pattern to expand on. And <clears throat> the easiest and the part that I use the most frequently is, uh, well, something like uh, dot star. So if I just want to list all of my dot files, um, I'll do an ls dot star right and so I'm not in my home directory so it's uh, not doing that but if I CD to my home directory um, I'll get a listing of all of my um, and I didn't pass the dash D flag so it expanded every directory uh, <clears throat> a listing of all of my dot files and directories um, so <clears throat> you can see that everything that got listed uh, has a dot in front of it um, <clears throat> And uh, that's uh, pretty useful uh, to have that as an option. Uh, the other thing that you can do is um, say that you want to list uh, only uh, C files. So uh, files for C, direct, uh, C programming language files. Uh, you can just do a star dot and then ch uh, will give you <clears throat> 
all of the files that are like that. So let me cd into ksh where I've actually got some C files, and you can see that's what happens. Um, <clears throat> there is also the uh, the question mark will match any single character. So if you just want um, files that have a single uh, that have a dot followed by a single character, you can do dot question mark if you don't care which character it is. Um, and then there's a couple more that you'll see uh, very infrequently. Um, oh yeah, I should mention that if you uh, prefix this, right, so say I want um, any character after this except uh, a Z, right, uh, I'll get the same output, but if I had uh, A Z, a file ending in .z, um, it won't be listed. So if I just do a regular ls, you can see that I get test.z. Um, or if I do this, I'll get the test.z. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple more um, advanced patterns that I uh, will not get into, um, but you know, you can use these when you've got more specific things that you want to search for um, or filter. Uh, I don't really ever use them, but you will see them occasionally in some shell scripts. Um, the other thing to note is that if you want a dot um, or a slash to be matched, Right? If you want to search across directories or if you want to see dot files, uh, you need to specify them explicitly, right? The patterns don't match those. So even if I do if I do an ls uh, star, uh, you'll see that even though like star should theoretically match any character, it does not match dots uh, at the beginning of a file name or a slash, right? So even if I do something like um, like this, um, it'll say like, "Hey, like it, it basically just gives an error, honestly." Um, <laughs> but yeah, it won't match uh, a dot file uh, like that. You have to say it explicitly outside of a pattern, right? So something like that. Or you can say um, star uh, dot star. So if I want to see everything that's in Git, um, <clears throat> I would have to do uh, something like this, right? So that's the only way that you can get a forward slash in your patterns. Okay, what else? Uh, redirection. Uh, I know I covered redirection a little bit. But there are more things that you can do. Um, I talked about appending. Uh, you can also do uh, open, you can like have, so when you do redirect for standard input, you uh, that file is only open for reading. Um, so sometimes you can do open that file for reading and writing. Um, you can do here documents. Um, and you can duplicate file descriptors. So you'll see this sometimes when people want to send both um, standard input and st standard error to dev null. They will uh, copy um, standard uh, output to uh, <clears throat> Copy standard error to dev null, and then, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so something like, yeah, so this is uh, a bad example. This is an incorrect example of something that'll be done, but they'll do uh, re redirect standard output to dev null, and then <clears throat> copy standard error, which is file descriptor two, to be the same thing as file descriptor one, which is now dev null, but you have to switch the order of this and this for that to work. Um, <clears throat> so that's redirection. Um, 
you can also do uh, arithmetic. So if I want to do echo um, two plus two, you'll get four, right? So, <clears throat> and there's a lot more that you can do with that. Um, the one thing that I will say is that if you want different bases for integers, um, you can do something like, uh, if I want like binary, I do two uh, hash uh, one zero zero zero, and that'll print out eight, right? Because that's eight in binary. Um, if you want it in octal, instead of doing eight uh, pound, you can just prefix it with a zero. Uh, so this should give me eight in octal. And if you want to do <clears throat> something like hexadecimal, uh, you can do zero x, and this should give me 16, right? So uh, I'm not going to go super into um, you know arithmetic expressions and like general mathematical stuff, um, but yeah, that's that. Uh, Coprocesses I'm not going to cover either because it's kind of dumb. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen anyone actually use it. Um, I've played around with it a little bit and it doesn't seem super useful, honestly. Um, the last thing that I guess I'll cover is functions. So you can create your own functions that do things. Um, and uh, that is uh, useful sometimes. Uh, but what I'll really just say is that it's worth, um, if you're trying to find a manual page for something, and you do something like man alias, uh, and it says no entry for this in the manual, uh, check the functions section, uh, or yeah, check the command execution um, functions, just the functions section of the manual page, and that will list all of the various uh, functions that are built into the shell. So they don't have their own manual page, they just have these little snippets that tell you what they do. Um, <clears throat> I've been using echo a lot, that just prints its arguments separated by spaces followed by a new line to the standard output. Um, you can do evaluate commands, uh, which is sort of like reparsing them, um, which can be kind of convenient. Um, you can execute a command. Um, so the shell will essentially close and just run whatever you gave it. Um, you can exit. Um, you can export things to the environment. Um, FC is uh, some history stuff. So if you are uh, entering a long sequence of commands that have to be entered in order, so I'll just do um, ls uh, echo and word count <clears throat> um, read me, right? Now, say I wanna run all those commands again, but I wanna edit something, you can do fc-e and then the editor of your choice. Uh, you don't have to use uh, a full path name. Uh, I just have mg aliased to something else, uh, so I'm gonna use the full path name for it. Um, and then, the name of the first command that you want, um, so ls, and then the name of the last command that you want, so wc. Um, and so what this will do is it'll search for the most recent command that begins with ls, and that'll be the first command that it puts in your editor. And then it'll search for the most recent command that begins with wc, and that'll be the last command that goes in your editor. So you can see this is what happens, and uh, I don't know, I'll do home slash me, slash um, dot profile for the word count. And uh, save it and quit. And it will rerun those commands as you have edited them, right? So <clears throat> you can see uh, what happened was it did ls echo and it prints it out to the screen too, which is nice, ls echo and then word count home dash me slash profile, right? So we get this nice ls, we get an echo with an empty line, and then we get a word count of dot profile. Um, 
And there's, you know, a couple different, you know, types of FC uh, that you can do. Um, oh, the last thing that I'll say is you can run commands in the background, right? So if I need to find a file and I'm doing find dot dash name and then a bunch of stuff, um, I don't know, junk, and then I'm sending the output to some place, um, I can put that in the background by appending to it an ampersand. And essentially that'll let me keep using the shell uh, while that's all happening. And then uh, the next command that you enter after it's done, uh, you'll get one of these little lines that says, hey, this is done. And then I can go and read the output and it didn't find anything. Um, so <clears throat> that's uh, somewhat interesting. Um, there's a print command, so you can print out stuff with like arguments, but I'm not really gonna get into that. Uh, I don't really ever use that. Um, the set command gives you a lot of like options that you can use. Um, so I have no clobber set, which prevents uh, output redirection from overriding ex existing files. Um, that's kind of a nice one so that I don't accidentally erase a file that I've uh, got some important information in. Um, suspend. Oh, and then test. It test is useful if you're doing shell programming, which I haven't really gotten into because I'm just focusing on one-liners. Um, but you can test whether or not like files exist or strings are equal to each other or you know less than each other, um, whether numbers are equal to each other, all kinds of things. Uh, you can time uh, commands. Uh, you can uh, catch signals, uh, <laughs> which might sound like a bunch of gibberish if you're not used to this already. And uh, yeah, if you want to create like arrays with parameters, uh, you'll need to get familiar with the typeset uh, command probably. Um, you can also say like, um, what base you prefer uh, a per an integer parameter to be output in. So I can do uh, type set dash i uh, i2 uh, for a parameter that I'll just call binary. And then if I say binary equals 10 echo binary, uh, I'll get 10 in binary. Uh, so that's kind of nice uh, if you need to convert between various bases. Um, <clears throat> Ulimit uh, is a way to increase or decrease the amount of resources that processes that you execute from the shell uh, can use. Uh, Umask is a way to set the default or influence the default permissions on your shell. I've talked about unalias, unset, unsets parameters. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you learned something in this video. Um, I'm going to go through in a little bit more detail some more stuff uh, <laughs> for the shell in another video. Uh, basically the shell programming aspects of the shell. Uh, but that is it for this one. Uh, hit like if you like this video, hit dislike if you didn't like it. In either case, let me know down in the comments why. And if you've got any questions, criticisms, or concerns, leave a comment for that as well. And as always, if you want to get notified when I make new videos, hit subscribe. Thanks. Peace.